Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Conan Exiles. This is an online multiplayer survival game with mounts and mounted combat set on the lands of Conan the Barbarian. Here you will enter an open world sandbox and play together with your friends or, you know, with creepy strangers as you build your own home or even a shared city. You will have to survive freezing cold temperatures, explore loot-filled dungeons, develop your character from a lowly peasant to a mighty barbarian and fight to dominate your enemies in epic siege wars. People on Steam are saying that the game can be a bit buggy and that can be annoying but it also has boobs in it and for this you can forgive everything. Hades. Game is an action RPG but a roguelite as well, meaning that you will die a lot and then you will die even more. But that is the beauty of Hades, you know, like in other games, you die, you rage quit and then you immediately uninstall. And here, instead of that, you will try again. And again, because it's fun, people on Steam are talking that this is a most pleasant form of suffering they have ever endured in their lives. Well, to be fair, all those people are probably virgins anyway. Although, if you don't like Greece, ancient Greece, Greek gods or Greek mythology in general, this game is probably not for you. Or, you know, you will die a lot in the environment you hate and then repeat the experience countless times. This is the true definition of hell, don't you think? And coincidentally, this is where all the action of Hades happens. <laughs> the game has overwhelmingly positive reviews and that's because it is great. Ghost Runner. This is a hardcore slasher packed with lightning fast action, set in a grim cyberpunk megastructure. Ye will climb Dharma Tower, humanity's last shelter after a world ending cataclysm, and make your way from the bottom to the top to confront the tyrannical Keymaster. The streets of this tower city are full of violence, evil Keymaster rules with an iron fist and little regard for human life. Although be warned, if you never like the platforming part of Doom Eternal, Ghost Runner is definitely not for you, because platform Forming besides the killing part is all you do here. Kingdom Come Deliverance if you liked Witcher and Skyrim, Kingdom Come Deliverance should tickle your balls a little. Although you will not find any fantasy stuff here, the game is realistic and is set in medieval Europe, but the story and quests are great, and the world is truly beautiful. The game has flaws like clumsiness of your character, several annoying bugs here and there, and in general this is an indie game that tries to hide behind a AAA facade. It's not AAA, just a really good indie game. Although the learning curve is weird and kinda reminds me of The Elder Scrolls, at the beginning you will be beaten by a random town drunk without a sweat, but after you spend, let's say, 80 hours in game, you can almost kill a small army by, you know, by blinking. I was going to say by peeing in the direction of your enemies, but realize that it's really hard to take your pee, -pee out when you are covered with all that armor. It's unrealistic, so blinking it is. <laughs> Dark Souls Remastered. I think you may have heard about this game a time or two, or more like 200 to be fair, because it is the game that started the whole genre. This is a beautifully remastered version where you return to Lord Run in stunning high definition detail running at 60 frames per second. This version includes the main game plus the Artorias of the Abyss DLC and also about 100 of your future deaths. <laughs> or maybe more. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete. Step into the boots of a ginger girl who can beat the shit out of you if you look at her the wrong way. And it seems that most of the Horizon Zero population has something against her. So, you know, they die. Here a bow and a mighty spear are your best friends in this vast wilderness. The melee aspect of the game will not leave any action fan disappointed. Battles are very dynamic and immersive. And the exploration of abandoned ruins adds spice to this great game as well. The Talos Principle you find yourself in a strange, contradictory world of ancient ruins and advanced technology. Tasked by your creator with solving a series of increasingly complex puzzles, you must decide whether to have faith or to ask the difficult questions. Who are you? What is your purpose? And why is vodka so expensive? You will have to solve more than 120 immersive puzzles, divert drones, manipulate laser beams and even replicate time to prove yourself and find a way out. If you think that you have a great interest intellect, <laughs> this game will humble you down, I promise. Assassin's Creed Odyssey 
If you are used to old school Assassin's Creed games, keep in mind that the Odyssey isn't like the others, and among your enemies you will encounter various monsters and mythological beasts from legends, like Medusa for example. The game really has some witchery vibes. Here you will also have weapons with supernatural abilities like increased strength or the ability to instantly knock out an opponent's shield. I don't think I should tell you something more about Assassin's Creed, there are plenty of them, and if you are not living under the rock in the bottom of the ocean on another planet in the parallel universe, you know know what they are and how they work. Call of Cthulhu if you like Lovecraftian horror and detective mystery games, this is the title you have to try. The story unfolds in the year of 1924. Here you are sent to look into the tragic death of the Hawkins family on the isolated Darkwater Island. And soon enough you will be pulled into a terrifying world of conspiracies, cultists and cosmic horrors. Nothing here is as it seems. Your sanity is all too often replaced by whisperings in the dark. People in Steam comments are saying that this game has only average, glitchy graphics. But the story is great, and another nice thing, at least for me, is that Call of Cthulhu is short, it will take about 8 hours from your boring life. Disco Elysium here your decisions matter, and no matter how dumb or weird they are, the game usually has a different answer and different outcome to everything you do. Here won't be situations where you decide to answer differently and still get the same outcome, it's not the Elder Scrolls. You will play as a raging alcoholic detective with memory loss, probably due to overconsumption of, you know, alcohol, but you don't know, you don't remember, and it's up to you to decide if you want to remember everything or just fabricate new fake memories by faking everything and then believing in those lies yourself, well, being as chaotic as you possibly can. The Outer Worlds. This is definitely one of the best games I have played in my life. It's funny, it has secrets, many guns, and places to explore. It's not just Fallout in space. I had more fun playing The Outer Worlds than I had playing Fallout 3 or 4. Even if this is a bit smaller game, I can absolutely give it 9 vodkas out of 10 and recommend it to you without a doubt. The game has some balancing problems. At first you die a lot, but later you don't bother to strategize even when fighting the strongest adversaries. You just click the left mouse button and hold it until everything turns into a mush of blood and intestines. Anyway, the game is great, especially for Fallout and Elder Scrolls fans. Pathfinder Kingmaker here you'll explore the Stolen Lands, a region that has been contested territory for centuries. Hundreds of kingdoms have risen and fallen in these lands, and now it's time for you to make your mark. By building your kingdom, of course. That is nice, but a lot of players agree that the game is heavily dependent on RNG and pure luck, so sometimes your skill and lifetime experience of playing such games is just not enough for beating an opponent. I can explain what rolling one means in a real-time terms. Imagine, if in real life you want to pull out a tick that is sucking your blood, but instead of a tick, you pull out your dick and then you suddenly realize that you are in Soviet Union, on a train on the way to the closest gulag and it's minus zillion degrees outside. Also, you have no food and you are already dead. That is what rolling 1 out of 20 looks like. And that's why, judging by the comments, Pathfinder has mostly positive reviews and not just positive or very positive. But now it's on sale, so it's automatically better. Outward. This is an open world RPG where the cold of a night or an infected wound can be as deadly as your inability to be a good gamer in general. I'm so sorry. Outward will give you a sense of adventure and will not guide you by hand with linear story. Although not everything is good, movement and combat feels a bit clunky, voice acting could be better, and character customization is very limited. But can you remember character customization in games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Witcher 3? How many different faces? and genders you could choose in there, right? Yeah, right. Sea of Thieves who has 8 legs, 8 arms and 8 eyes? Of course, it's 8 pirates or someone from Chernobyl. This game is a great pirate experience, from sailing and fighting to exploring and looting, everything you need to live the pirate life and become a legend. The game is obviously inspired by Pirates of Caribbean movies rather than real pirate life, which is way less romantic. And I'm not talking about downloading illegal games from the pirate bay. That is romantic. In Sea of Thieves you will explore a vast open world filled with unspoiled islands, sunken ships and mysterious artifacts. The game is huge and is constantly among the top sellers on Steam, meaning that you will never lack people to pillage. Noita 
Game will allow you to dive into adventure without sinking many hours preparing for battle. Noita is a magical action roguelite set in a world where every pixel is physically simulated. Here you will fight, explore, melt, burn, freeze and evaporate your way through the procedurally generated world using spells you've created by yourself. Game is really fun and is a rare owner of overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. That alone should put this game onto your radar. Generation Zero this game was really hyped upon a release and when people didn't get a masterpiece, bad reviews started to flow. That is a story of many games and Generation Zero definitely doesn't deserve that, because it may not be a masterpiece, but it's not a bad game as well. He will explore alternative Sweden in 1989. One day Swedes woke up early in the morning, you know, to milk their reindeer herd, because obviously that's what they do in Sweden, and then instead of their beloved deers, they saw evil robots everywhere. I don't know where those robots came from, but I can only assume that it's a work of evil Norwegians, or even more evil Finns from Finland, because they were all in envy of the reindeer Sweden had. 75% of recent reviews are positive, but those 25% of negative ones are still a big number, so be careful, make sure that this game is for you. Frostpunk this is a society survival game. As the ruler of the last city on Earth, it is your duty to manage both its citizens and its infrastructure. Optimization and resource management often clash with empathy and thoughtful decision making. For example, if a child is injured at work, you have several options of what to do next. Ban child labor, limit child employment to relatively safe jobs, or just ignore the injury and put children to work anyway. Because, you know, that vodka will not make itself, right? Dead Stranding. Because you are obviously enjoying this list, I have a question for you. Have you subscribed already? Because that would be nice. So, after the collapse of civilization, you must journey across a ravaged landscape crawling with weird threats to save mankind from the brink of extinction. The famous Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen and the Walking Dead hair model Norman Reedus gave their bodies and voices to the characters, so that alone is probably enough to catch your attention. Also, you can actually take a shit in here. Such nice details. That Stranding is definitely not a standard game, it really differs from almost everything I have seen. And I have seen a lot. Once I saw a potato salad with pineapples in it. Oh, the horror, I couldn't sleep for days. Dragon Age Inquisition some call this game Fantasy Mass Effect. It's really similar. Here you have a team of heroes and you can control all of them. You can also pause the game anytime you want as well, but really nobody does that. Your strategy skills are kinda useless here because your heroes are strong enough to kill everyone without any intervention from above whatsoever. Well, most of the time. Game is plot driven, has deep and interesting storylines, great characters and it will provide you with many hours of fun. If you like Mass Effect and Witcher or Skyrim, this is definitely for you. Starbound. This is basically Terraria in space, and it is made very well. Very positive reviews on Steam confirms that. Here you create your own story and save the universe from forces that destroyed your home, uncovering greater galactic mysteries in the process, or you may wish to forego a heroic journey entirely in favor of colonizing uncharted planets, or delve into dangerous dungeons and lay claim to otherworldly treasures. Discover ancient temples and modern cities, trees with eyes, mischievous penguins, and talking Ding dong! Oh wait, the latter may not be in here. Crisis free. This is a game made in the year of 2013, but it definitely looks like it was made in, you know, 2014. Wow, amazing! Yeah, <laughs> although people who are saying that it looks exactly like modern games nowadays are kinda wrong. It doesn't. Despite that, Crisis definitely looks very good, and it will heat up even your new RTX card. The game has aged very well in general, but I may say blasphemy now. Graphics have nothing to do with it. The main reason is the game play itself. It's really fun to shoot all the weapons in this game. Timing, sound, the feeling of recoil is a masterpiece. If you liked modern Doom and Doom Eternal, Crisis is the game for you, no doubt. Age of Wonders Planetfall 
emerge from the cosmic dark age of a fallen galactic empire to build a new future for your people. Ye will build your kingdom from one of six unique factions, ranging from the militant vanguard to the dinosaur riding Amazons, cyborg zombies, and unicorn raccoon kittens of doom. Well, maybe not the latter, but I assure you that the diversity of units is really nice. The game has a great single player campaign and random skirmish maps. It's a great game for you if you are a fan of games like Disciples or Heroes of Might and Magic. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine Long time ago, like 10 years from now, I was running a blog in Lithuanian about video games. I had about 2000 followers on Facebook and one of those followers gave me the CDK for Space Marine, saying that I must try the game. I was really skeptical, but I decided to try. Coincidentally, I had a free day back then. So I installed it in the early morning and I literally played for 10 hours straight till I finished the game. It was really awesome. I was enjoying it very much. And yeah, it is short, but really entertaining. Really entertaining. Although, be sure that you play with a gamepad, it's way more fun this way. Also, it makes no sense for this game to cost 45 euros when it's not on sale. It's 10 years old, what is wrong with their marketing? Grim Dawn why do Diablo 3 developers cry when they play Grim Dawn? Because they have made Diablo 3 and not Grim Dawn, obviously. So this game is the closest thing to Diablo 2 sequel we never had. It's an indie game, but it's huge and filled with loot, secrets and demons creepier than your mother-in-law. I'm kidding, that is impossible. XCOM 2 20 years have passed since the world leaders offered an unconditional surrender to alien forces. XCOM, the planet's last line of defense, was left decimated and scattered. Now the aliens rule Earth, building shining cities that promise a brilliant future for humanity on the surface, while concealing a sinister agenda and eliminating all who descend from their new order. All you have to do is to regain control of the Earth. It may sound easy, and it is, because you are awesome and aliens suck balls. Show them who's the boss. Welcome to Earth. Yeah, like that. Control. A corruptive presence has invaded the Federal Bureau of Control, and only you have the power to stop it. The world around you is now your weapon in an epic fight to annihilate an ominous enemy through deep and unpredictable environments. Containment has failed, humanity is at stake, so it's time to kick some paranormal ass. SCP vibes are really strong here. To be fair, this game feels like you are in a dream all the time. Well, nightmare to be exact, because everything is changing all the time. The game is not scary but it's ominous, that's for sure. Oxygen not included. Here you'll find out that scarcities of oxygen, warmth and sustenance are constant threats to your colony's survival. Guide colonists through the perils of subterranean asteroid living and watch as their population grows until they are not simply surviving but thriving. You know, like Bear grills in nature. Except here you don't need to drink your own piss. Though you can do that if you want in real life, I'm not judging you. Although if that's the drink of your choice, please feel free not to share any vodka cocktail cocktail recipes with us. Wow, I got carried away so fast. So everything in your space colony is under your control. From excavation and resource allocation right down to plumbing and power systems, resources will begin depleting with your first breath. So be sure to dig fast if you want to live. Although if someone from the Mafia says these words to you in some moment of your life, it may not be entirely true. I don't recommend to dig. Mm -mm. Jurassic World Evolution here you can build your very own deadly amusement park. Did I just say deadly? Oh yes I did. Have you seen the movies? If not, I do recommend watching the first one at least to see how all this can go very wrong. Few velociraptors can escape the cage and start feeding on your paying customers. Only you can decide if you want to tranquilize them or, you know, leave them to velociraptors as it is. If you ever worked at retail, and I did, I know you hate your customers anyway. They're always unhappy with something, so let them come playing for real this time. Black Mesa this is an original Half-Life, just with better graphics and better everything. It is made by fans, and it is made so good that you can find Black Mesa officially on Steam, where it is an owner of overwhelmingly positive reviews. If you never played the original Half-Life, this remastered edition is the best way to experience it. No clunky old-school graphics, no compatibility problems, great gameplay and really interesting suspenseful story. It's a nice game, and it may be a great way for you to try it. The Surge 2 
Robots have gone haywire. Insane augmented co-workers and rogue AI, everything wants you dead. But you are not some lame puny peasant. You have your mechanical sword and can beat enemies with it and take their parts and make yourself better in the process. Game is souls-like, so don't expect easy combat, but if you are up for the challenge, the Surge 2 and also the first Surge game will definitely entertain you. Northgard this is an RTS game based on Norse mythology in which you play as a clan of Vikings trying to take control of the mysterious newfound continent. The game has a decent campaign with a pretty good story. Sadly, Northgard's AI is like your wife. Cheating. Yep, with infinite resources and manpower, meaning that developers couldn't create really good intelligence that could win against humans on its own. But the scripted part is great. It's really good strategy game in general. Desperados 3 if you, like me, never played the prequels before, you probably think that this is a game similar to XCOM, just with cowboys. A big no to that, because this game is real-time and not turn-based. Remember Commandos? Not that excuse of a game remake version with censored Nazi flags, etc., but that old one, which was actually good back in the days. Also, I cannot understand how you can censor the past. It, it happened. If you hide Nazi flag in your World War II game, uh, are you implying that Nazis never existed or what? I, I didn't understand. So the Desperados is like old good Commandos game, but modern. Graphics of this game earned a special place in my cold heart. Visuals are incredible, you know, as Confucius once said, the vodka is in the details, and here you will find plenty of that. Not vodka, just details. Solasta he will take control of four heroes, each with skills that complement one another. Every hero expressed themselves in the adventure, making each action and dialogue choice a dynamic part of the story. Although if you are expecting a dialogue worthy of Lord of the Rings narrative, aim a bit lower, somewhere where Hobbit is. You can customize your heroes in many ways, but sadly the side slider of your ding dong is not available and that is a huge flaw for this game. Some say the only flaw, because the game has very positive reviews on Steam and was very warmly met by the fans of a genre. Two Point Hospital. He will build and decorate a hospital, cure patients with utterly bizarre illnesses, train your staff and upgrade machines to create the most effective facility possible. Game is humorous, here you will find various funny diseases you can cure, or at least you can try to cure them. Also, be sure that those illnesses are funny only to us, definitely not for your patients. You wouldn't want a penisitis on your face, right? I'm pretty sure of that. Borderlands 3. Many gamers are disgusted by the graphics of Borderlands franchise and will rather watch the paint dry than play one of those games. But this looter shooter has a lot of charm, and if you never played any of Borderlands before, third part may be the gem you are looking for. You know, I'll be honest, I'm one of those who would rather watch the paint dry, but I'm working on it, so maybe someday. Maybe when Borderlands 4 will come out, maybe then I… yeah, probably not. Terraria. A flat version of Minecraft, although more beautiful, with more special effects and impressive lighting. Here you can craft hundreds of items, build houses or even castles in any form you desire, defeat waves of enemies and dig down below to encounter things of unspeakable horrors. Just be sure that you have a friend, because playing Terraria alone is just half the fun, or even less. Human, fall flat. This game was created by one man from the same country as I am, Lithuanian dude Thomas Sakalauskas. He sold over 30 million copies so far, so he's definitely not a poor person right now, and that is not a coincidence. This game is very entertaining puzzle platformer with ragdolls mechanics, and the best review I have read about this game was written by IGN. They said, it's just dumb fun. And yeah, that's what it is, tons of thing guaranteed. Blasphemous. Explore this nightmarish world of twisted religion and discover its many secrets hidden deep inside. Use devastating combos and brutal executions to smite the hordes of grotesque monsters and titanic bosses, all ready to rip you limb from limb. This is one of the greatest platformer games released in the past decade, although be warned, Blasphemous is hard, it will make you rage quit, oh yes it will. Divinity Original Sin 2 while crowdfunded games like Pillars of Eternity have tried to recreate the designs of the 90s classics, Original Sin 2 feels like an answer to the question. What if people never stopped making this kind of RPGs? And this is obviously one of the best RPG games ever created. Overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam can confirm that with ease. If you have a friend, you can play co-op mode. But since you don't have one, your mother-in-law will do just fine. Cuphead 
This is a classic run and gun action game heavily focused on boss battles. Inspired by cartoons of the 1930s, the visuals and audio are created with the same techniques of the era. For example, hand-drawn cell animation, watercolor backgrounds and original jazz recordings. So basically you will feel like in an old cartoon all the time and admit, when you were a kid, haven't you ever thought about how cool it would be if computer games were as smooth as those Disney movies? And there you go. Although keep in mind that the game is hard, really hard. Mutant Year Zero – Road to Eden This is a tactical game that combines the turn-based combat of XCOM with real-time stealth and exploration of post-human world reclaimed by nature. And smart animals! It seems that here you will control Donald Duck and his friend Bebop from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. To survive, companions must venture out of the city to explore the zone, where one day they might find the Eden of Legends, the ancient heaven in the middle of hell, I guess, with mountains of potato salad and rivers of vodka. Maybe you will find all your answers in there. Then again, maybe it's all bullshit. Game has really beautiful graphics, great humor and an interesting story. Also very positive reviews on Steam. Dungeon of Nolbeck this is a humoristic approach to the serious RPG genre. Here you'll find exciting battles with creative support mechanics between team members and an adaptive difficulty system, from an accessible and fun story mode with simplified combat to the nightmare mode, where the smallest tactical errors will doom you. Here you'll also encounter more than 100 enemies and epic boss battles. I don't know, all this sounds kinda fun. Not every game must have a serious story, sometimes we all need to relax and this game might be just it. Children of Morta this is actually a hack and slash RPG game, but it's not for everyone. For example, it's not for me at all, because I don't like stories about families, about love and similar drama. I want pure action, and if it lacks action, it has to be really good drama. You know, like movies of American Beauty or Seven Pounds, but this game wants to be both Diablo and a dramatic story about family. So that doesn't click for me, but I know plenty of people who like this drama stuff and adore this particular game, and if you are one of them, keep in mind that Children of Mota has very positive reviews and in general it's a really good game for drama people. Pillars of Eternity 2 Pursue a rogue god over the land and see in the sequel of the famous RPG. Captain your ship on a dangerous voyage of discovery across the vast and explored archipelago region of the Dead Fire. Bend the world to your will as you explore the depths of infinite possibilities, including detailed character customization, total freedom of exploration, penis enlargement operation, and more meaningful choices at every turn. Okay, maybe not all of those. Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Game surprised me by not having any UI, no information bar or anything like that, and that's a good thing because the game doesn't need one anyway. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is very detailed and the praise this game received for its graphics is very much deserved. The game slowly reveals clues that allow you to piece the events of its Lovecraftian mystery together. Main story is constructed from several smaller stories and once you collect all of the clues, the game rewards you with an interesting and unexpected conclusion. Game also has very positive reviews on Steam. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more videos like that. I'm making those for every Steam sale. Have a nice day, bye!